What if the fake news canceled the world's most beloved heroes? When a tragic attack ends the lives of precious innocents, our most celebrated heroes find themselves blamed and canceled by the media that once glorified them. Now in hiding, will they be able to trust each other long enough to prove their innocence? Will they better fight as hard as they can? Because if they don't, an even bigger tragedy is coming. And this time, it will cost millions of lives. Truth, Justice, American Way, the 64-page full-color graphic novel. Get yours today, only on Indiegogo. Hi guys, how you doing? I hope, uh, hope all is going well for you. Just chilling on a Saturday. i um, working on some beef law pages. It's gotta be as dynamic as possible. Gotta be available. So here's a little bit of process for me. Um, I drew it on this side. Just a quick idea I had. Just, I want big things moving in the camera, cartoon action, you know what I mean? Anime energy and all that. And uh, I just drew it out. Then I flip it over to see if the anatomy balances and everything's working out, and I redraw it. I use a uh, soft-ish pencil, and I don't sharpen it too much, because I don't want it to get too tight or anything like that, you know? And then, um, so I, I drew it, erased it, then I, uh, or I drew it the second time to tighten it up, balance it. I drew a skull, actually, it's like a layout of um, perspective of because that's an interesting angle that we want to get that right. And, uh, and then I'm gonna flip it over, this time and then I'll finish it off and uh, this is just like typing paper that's comic book size and then I will uh I will uh put that on the regular paper but I'm also going to do a background on a separate piece of paper there's going to be a vanishing point about here so it's like you're standing on the street like imagine you're standing in the middle street you're looking straight up like straight up and he's coming down this is a rooftop battle at the beginning of Beat Wall uh, there's this illegal underground fights and the weirdo mafioso rich government elite people like to watch it kind of like van damme's original movie lion art so i just wanted you to see this uh second stage of that i'm doing here so yeah i thought i'd go live with this hanging out on a saturday it is beautiful weather here my wife is out of town and i really just want to go play hooky and screw around go out to eat and go mess around and not be responsible so i am resisting that by uh doing a live stream with you guys I wasted a lot of time yesterday. We didn't get a lot of things done that I wanted to. So, um, yeah, I thought you guys would love to see a little behind the scenes here. Hope some people will come in. Welcome Timmy Mello. Welcome Garrett X. Welcome uh, Mighty Magic. But uh, yeah, yeah, this is uh, a book that is near and dear to my heart. I'm so excited about people. It is. Uh, it's a culmination of everything I've ever wanted to do um, as a writer, as an illustrator, as a fan of like 80s and 90s action movies. Um, it really is my love letter to all of that amazing uh, action pop culture movies. So again, this is just what I would consider production art. This is not action art you're going to see uh, in some point. I mean, this is just a piece of typing. And I'm gonna light box it onto my comic paper later. One thing I'm trying to avoid is to tighten this up. I do not want to tighten this. I want to keep it loose. I want that. I want that manga, anime. I want that insanity. I think one problem that's happening in American, um, in a lot of American illustration, uh, and there's a lot of good stuff out there that's very loose. But I think one thing that's easy to fall into is trying to be too realistic. Uh, too tight, too photo reference. There's no photo reference here. I ain't even looking at a ton of anatomy stuff for any of this. Um, I'm just trying to go with the big shapes that please my eye. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Exactly what I'm doing here. And it is, you know, I'm in San Diego. It is such beautiful weather. It's a Saturday. College football kicked off. Every, everything in me is telling me not to work today. I don't have to. I'm self-employed, dang it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I want to do the right thing. I will sacrifice and draw for you. I know. I don't like to throw around the little tour. But I will do it just for you. And I want to make sure the contour is right. The contour is the outer, the outline. The outline of the shape. And I drew a skull on this side. 
um, to help me lay out the placement, you know, the geography, uh, the topography, the whatever, of where all these pieces are going to go, and that perspective when you're underneath and you're shooting up. So, uh, let me make sure this is set to my chip. You know? um, hello, Buddha Bear. Hello, Octoline Comics. Mighty Magic. Um, yeah, everybody gets in there. All kinds of folks. Thank you for coming in. And uh, if you haven't uh, taken a look at it, Truth, Justice, American Way, I encourage you to uh, check that out. The link's in the description. Um, we've, we've, we've done really good on sales, but man, I would like to lift that up even more. Oh, exciting item here for some of you that are fans of me and this channel and everything that's here. I don't know if you've seen it, but I uh, have been doing double impact with Sean Fangetti, the creator of the Great Nosferro comic. And um, we do a, a show every Wednesday night at 7 Pacific called Double Impact, where we celebrate things not unlike people. We celebrate everything, Van Damme, Steven Seagal, um, just all of our favorite action heroes. We celebrate all that stuff. And uh, we review those movies and we laugh. And we love those movies. We don't just like make fun of them or anything. We actually love those movies. Huge part of our you know, adolescence and childhood. Uh, huge influence on my sensibilities as a creator, face is quickly. Um, huge influence on me as a creator. And uh, we added the great Jericho Green to that show because he too is a giant fan. So uh, it's really fun. We just did Under Siege. Please, please check that out. That was just an amazing episode of Jericho. Jericho is so talented. He's a great improv comic. You know, I, I pride myself on my improv skills. And uh, Jero's, Jero's. <laughs> See, I'm improv -ing. That's why I screwed up. Man. Uh, Jericho, he's a great improv. He's really got the chops for it. I think it's fantastic. And uh, that's what you need when you're entertaining. Them. The first rule is we, you know, we have to entertain. We can't be boring. That's a big part of what we're doing. So, absolutely. Check out. Double Impact, Triple Threat. We have a new intro. Shantan Jetty made a new intro video and sent it to me. It's really funny. If you want to see Jericho Green with Steven Seagal's ponytail, uh, you need to check us out. You need to check out what we're doing. It's a lot of fun. Also, another note on the action front, because it's all action all the time with me. Um, so I went to this dinner in Chinatown about two, three weeks ago. Because I did a comic book for Ron Hall. He's been in a lot of Kung Fu and martial arts movies. And um, so there was a dinner there. And they had a bunch of luminaries from the history of Hong Kong cinema and American martial arts cinema. Benny the Jet Rakides. I mean, just look him up. He's a legend of uh, martial arts movie. Sheldon Lettich, the writer of Rambo 3, Lionheart, Double Impact. Kickboxer, Bloodsport, I right? was involved in so many Van Damme movies. Only the Strong, which is another great movie. Um, Sheldon Lettuce was there. Paco Prieto was there. He's the heavy in, uh, in uh, Only the Strong. Mark DeCastos, I think he hosts Iron Chef, but he's used to. But he's in Pact and the Beast, The Brotherhood of the Wolf, the great like French martial arts film. Uh, the Sandman from Death Warrant. Just Billy Banks, the Thai Boga. All kinds of people from, uh, what's his name? Um, from Kung Fu Hustle. All kinds of guys were there. It was really cool. The one guy that was there that was amazing who sat next to me at dinner was Todd Semplante. And I interviewed him for an hour. And his story is amazing. You know, he's, it's the unsung guy. The stuntmen, the photo doubles, all that. And he was Van Damme's first like, stand-in photo double. But then, uh, eventually, he became a stuntman. And uh, this is all through the era of uh, Knockoff, Double Impact, Death War, The Quest, you know, like that middle of Van Damme's career, of his, that right spot of Van Damme's career. I think right after, right after Double Impact, you know. And uh, his story is great. And I chopped up that hour into a few interviews. And I uh, posted on my channel, so you need to go, you guys need to check that out. You see, I have my iPad right in front of me right here, so I can do the comments real quick. Um, Headbands are always good for real. This is Barrett X. Um, headbands are good for cross country. Exactly. Helps to find the runners. Head there. Mighty can choose what's new. Games and balance is big. 
uh, Buddha Bear. Uh, looking to buy Truth, Justice, America will soon still got to get Isom cards and looking to fund on a couple other projects. Thank y'all for being awesome. Having the project up until October. Yeah, up until October at least. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for, uh, thank you for considering my uh, BC, aka the New Dark Shadow. 65 days until Halloween. I do. I mean, if you're a creative, who doesn't love Halloween, right? So, I love Halloween. It was one of my first memories of drawing. I drew a little comedy strip. This must have been first grade or kindergarten. I don't remember any of the jokes. But I do remember um, it was called like Frank. And I drew a skeleton in the graveyard. And he had a gun. And I don't remember what it was about or any of the jokes. I remember my dad getting a little upset. He's like, oh yeah, because the skeleton in the graveyard had shot someone and killed them. And I don't think there was much more of a story to it than that. My dad told me, why don't you draw something nice? But uh, don't don't get it twisted. It's, uh, um, my dad was always very encouraging that I do this, actually. And it's funny because he's an immigrant, and usually, you know, immigrants are like, "Oh, you need to be a doctor, you need to be a lawyer, you need to be all this stuff." And uh, you know, he wanted me to be an engineer or something like that. But when I told him this is what I wanted to do, he said, "That's awesome. Make sure you make up your own and own it." You know what I mean? And I was about 12 or 13. And even though I was young, I understood it because I had just watched what uh, Jim Lee, Eric Larson, Tom McFarland, and the guys uh, did at Image. And I, you know, even though I was 13, 14, whatever, I semi understood what they were saying at Image about how Marvel was making all the money and they were making all the art and all the sales. So they formed Image so they could have control of their careers in a much better way. So, you all know I worked with DC forever, but this is much better being CG, and I think we thought I couldn't do it without you. Um, let's see. Budbear, you did a comment for Ron Paul. No, Ron Hall, H-A-L-L. Hotel, Alpha, what is it, Lima, Lima? I don't, I don't know my, uh, Ron Hall. So, love the wood pencil, that's all you, yeah, I love to draw in these, the, uh, Pentel. Enos, um, it's our color Eno, it's awesome. It's so waxy and buttery soft. I love to go with this really soft, this is just a number two HB. I use a soft pencil intentionally because if I use this hard one here, and I'll use this for later stuff, um, if I use like a uh, two H like this, it's gonna, you're gonna tighten your details. And if you tighten your details, you'll lose that swing. See the swing on this leg here? You gotta keep it soft and keep that contour nice. You know what I mean? So I, I like a, a soft pencil to get this done. So, um, ladies man, 727. Did you see JDA Eric Lush interview that was uh, an interview? I did. I did. Um, Teflon Run, I hope you plug it to wrap around cover. It will now, Teflon Run. Thank you. Great idea. It will now. See, that's the, one of the great pleasures of uh, Comics Day, is I can interact directly with fans, and the fans are like, I like anchovies, and I'm like, all right, anchovies it is. You know, what you guys like, you know, if it's sound, obviously, if I, obviously fans can suggest stupid and bad ideas, and obviously creators can have stupid and bad ideas, but the interaction is what's so great. And check this out though, even if an idea is stupid, if it's gonna make fans happy and sell, then it's not stupid, actually. You know what I mean? Like, personally, I hate seafood. I hate it, hate it, hate it. And uh, I used to work at Pizza Hut in high school, and people would order an anchovy pizza. What if my little 15-year-old behind was in the kitchen there at Pizza Hut making a great, and someone ordered an anchovy pizza, and I was like, no, I don't like anchovies, and I wouldn't make it for them. Like, think how stupid that would be, right? Because my job isn't to make them necessarily what I want. My job is, you know, customers always right, customers right. Now, of course, there are exceptions to that. Customers actually not always right. But those exceptions prove the rule, the general rule we go by that, yes, the customer is always right. You know what I mean? If a customer is spitting blood and being like the most disrespectful, insane person ever, uh, no, I have sovereignty as a human being. You can't be humanized. But we got legit complaints or cool suggestions. I'm in. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I think comments are coming from out. Um, let's see. Is Eric Larson making a fool of himself with TDS on Twitter? 
Uh, I don't think he's making a fool of himself any more than any of us that are going on rants about politics. We all get very passionate about this stuff because we believe we're right, right? I don't, I'm under no illusions that everything I've said politically is correct. For those coming in late, this is a technique David Williams showed me. You can see this ghosted out race part. What I did is I had an idea and I drew it really quick in pencil to get the general nice contour and shape. Then I flipped it over to make sure the anatomy was balanced and all that and the contour was nice and that our big shape is good. Because that's all that matters is the big shape, right? And then after I did the second drawing to balance it, it was correct. Then I, then I erased this one and I started over now with tighter details. David Williams taught me this idea. He says in animation they do this stuff all the time. You know what I mean? I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Jack Dorsey. That's a great name. That's a Twitter CEO. It's in the chat. Welcome. Um, let's see. Do you have a preference for regular pencils to draw with rather than the pencils? Um, I prefer soft pencils. That way I don't over tighten my detail. Since I ink myself, I don't want to get too tight. I really love drawing with this blue uh, palette Eno, uh, just because I love the texture on it. It's really fun. It's like a crayon, but the pencil's crisp. And then I showed this earlier. This is a little too tight, this one. I'll use this one for a minute and show you. If you use a really hard, tight pencil, it's very easy to tighten up your drawing and kill the spontaneous energy. You have to be very careful. I'm sure there are some guys out there that can use it pretty easy, and I can keep it loose with a tight pencil like this too. But it's a bit more of a challenge, you know what I mean? So, um, but you know, studying so much art with my buddies on the Players Club that we do on Tuesday nights, tune in on Tuesday nights and watch us on there, please. That show is doing good, but it's dang, it needs to be watched a lot more because we are going deep. We are sharing a ton of our knowledge of expert illustrators and storytellers. And uh, if you love the inside things, the deep, deep understanding of comics and how they work and how it works to be an artist. See, I hate this shape right here. This is this point. That's not correct at all. This should be a little bit coming out and then swing up. More roundness. More roundness. So we gotta go higher. Can you take me higher? That's kind of the way my brain works. When I hear one thing, it will uh, improv yes and to another thing off. Um, but see, so that's where this tracing comes in here where you, uh, you kind of trace your own work and you see mistakes that you don't see sometimes when you have it one way, you know? So, oh, I just realized that would be up there like that. You know, the shorts would be over the cap. There's no way the cap would be in front of the shorts. Right. So let me check on the chat. So I don't, yeah, so I don't like this pencil because it's a lot tighter. So I want to stay loosey goosey. All the animated movies to the TV shows getting uh, cut on the ATM Max and other places need to be. Sorry, this is far away from my iPad. Let me try it here for a minute. Um, you need to crowdfund or be their own bosses and promote themselves when you think mine is CG. Uh, that might be cool, ladies, man, 727. Um, Bearwolf 13. I want to learn how to start how to create a notebook. Bearwolf, my uh, advice to you on that is do it. It doesn't matter if it sucks. Because the first artwork that I did, and David Williams, and Jim Lee, and Travis Charade, J. Scott Campbell, you think of the greatest artist, Frank Pizzetta, nobody was good right out the gate and exactly what they wanted. Don't let that uh, very understandable but very unrealistic feeling of, uh, well, I only want to do it if it's going to win, if it's going to be perfect. No, just if you want to make a comic, look at a comic you admire, copy it. I don't mean copy the art and the story, but generally copy it. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Uh, this is what it looks like they did. Mimic it, and as you mimic it, you will learn things that no one can verbalize. The uh, experience isn't the best teacher, it's the only teacher. You know what I'm saying? So, you're only gonna learn how to do this by doing it. I know that's very unsatisfying. That is not what you wanna hear. You wanna hear that there's some way to learn this, and then do it perfectly after you learn it. Nope, the only way to learn it is to do it crappy, and get better. That's the only way to learn. Really is. And, uh, and you should feel encouraged by that because you have total control of that. You know what I mean? So, absolutely. Let's see. Dega, uh, Veridex said Degas. Degas is an artist. 
one must draw the same subject 10 times, 100 times, and even if they got right. It's all about repetition. It's no different than weightlifting. Any of you guys out there that are weightlifted, if you, um, because if you came to the gym and you said, I want to know how to bench press 300 pounds, I would tell you I have really good news for you. I know how you can do it. Start off benching 135. You do that for a while until you can bench, you know, 185. You do that for a while until you can bench 225. You do that for a while until, you know what I mean? So um, that's all it is. You're like, I want to know how to make a comment. I want to know how to do anatomy or shortening, right? So you already know how to learn it. You know how to learn it by doing it and being unsatisfied. And take that, like jujitsu gets you to take the uh, momentum and repurpose it for you, right? That's how jujitsu, a lot of it is like that. There's that Taekwondo. I don't know. One of the martial arts, the guy throws a punch, you grab his punch and flip. I think it's jujitsu, Taekwondo, whatever. I'm not a martial artist. Right? My point is, take that negative feeling of you're not satisfied with how your heart looks and jujitsu it, flip it. Use that energy to say, I'm not satisfied with how my art looks, even though it's good. So I will use that dissatisfaction as motivation to keep plugging away. Keep working in the dark where no one can see. That's what you got to do there. And you can do it. Um, Bear Wolf 13. I want to do a book about Hiawatha, but in a Thundercat style and a combination of all the things on the cover. Then do it. Start today. Be like, oh my gosh, it's Mount Everest. How do I climb Mount Everest? One step at a time. That's all you do. So if you want to do your uh, Native American uh, Thundercats, then start today. I would do the smallest thing possible to make it happen. I would um, I would draw some concept art. You know, I'll, I'll take the time out and show you some concept art. The beat ball right here. You guys want to see this? Be guys, beat ball is going to be so much fun. So much. Let me take all this concept art part here so you can see it. But yeah, this is the main character of Beef Law. His name is Max Volkov. Forced to fight against his real in deadly underground kumites in Hong Kong, 1994. Max Volkov's father has one foul of Chinese and Russian mob. Will he survive the tournament long enough to expose the British government and their mafia counterparts in their drug running operations? I gotta work on the pitch a little bit. Zhang Xing, she's the daughter of the main Chinese mafia boss overlord. Uh, we've got Grigory Volkov, he's a butcher, the father of Max and Alex. They're the twin brothers uh, that are going to save the day. This is Chong Chi Hua, he's the big heavy for the Chinese Mafia. And I'm going for the Street Fighter kind of art style. And uh, I love drawing in that room piano pencil. I've simplified my art more like a, a lot of influence from Arthur Adams and the Street Fighter Udon Entertainment. I want to go that way instead of like Image Comics. Like, this is Niles Chesterfield, right? Could it be more British? And he is uh, in part of the British Hong Kong government in the 90s. He's corrupt as a mofo, working with the Chinese and Russian mob, move drugs, and some other things. If, uh, if Max doesn't get to the bottom of this, it isn't just his family that can die. What the Chinese and Russian mob and the British government uh, bad guys are up to, it could spark a world war. So this is high, high stakes. This is Nina Derringer. She's a uh, concert pianist, martial artist, and girlfriend of uh, Max Volkov. And uh, this is Alex Volkov right here. He's the brother of Max Volkov. And he's another great martial artist. Uh, this is M Misha Moroza. Misha's the father uh, and the head of the whole Russian mob going on. Uh, this is his son, Sergei Moroza. And he's like an enforcer for his dad. They, they have a tenuous like relationship with the Chinese mob. They work together when it suits them. This is Zhang Wei. He is the head of the Chinese mob. A big shock of white hair. I love that concept. Um, you know, kind of like, uh, I don't know, he just has a big full head of white hair. This is uh, Zhang Jing again. Um, I really like drawing her. But you see how I'm really leaning into cartoony stuff a lot because I realized how much I love it. You know what I mean? And a little more Zhang Jing. I really, I really love illustrating her a lot. She's become a favorite. So I'm going to up her a little bit in the story. And then here's just a little more flavor with Max Volkov. Um, he's dribbling a basketball just because basketball is huge in the 90s. This is 1994. He's going back to, and you gotta love that haircut too. That's Van Damme's haircut in the uh, art target. You know, I mean, the, the power moment, as I call it. So that's a bunch of concept art. So, Bear, whatever your full nickname was, go out and do concept art. Oh, here's a little more Max. A little more Max full color. Do some concept art to fulfill your universe. You know what I mean? Just work on some concept art. And uh, that would be the first thing you do. Do you have to do 15 pages of concept art the first day? No. 
do one. Do one sketch of a character that you like. And maybe your main character is not even your favorite character to draw. So just go ahead and do that. So, you know, let's see. Um, Timmy Mello, study, study, study each reference. That's definitely helped me improve my sketches. Yes, Timmy, combine the study with the practice. Studying is epistemological knowledge. That is book learning. And I always talk about this on my channel. Book learning is worthless and actually bad for you if it's all you have. But what book learning will do, we all know these uh, young, far left, overeducated kids, right? These stupid uh, millennial, you know, pronouns, all this garbage. And they're the most self satisfied, proud, arrogant people. Because I am a degree. Well, what the degree does with no real life experience behind it is makes you overconfident and arrogant about your intelligence. And real intelligence is only going to come from actually doing things, not from going to some school and paying too much for a degree. That's not where real intelligence comes from. Real intelligence only comes from doing. It. When you read a book and learn how to do something, all you prove is you know how to read. Never proven that you actually know how to do it. There's just knowledge, and most and the most important knowledge, it only comes from doing. It only comes from doing, not from reading. So read about it, learn what it is they want you to do, and then go do it and do it and do it over and over and put your work out there. Don't be like, oh, this isn't perfect. Yeah, no shit. Uh, no one's work is ever perfect. Okay? So if you like this, you're having fun, you love watching, um, hit the, uh, make sure you subscribe. They unsubscribe people sometimes. Hit the like, share this out and all that. And uh, yeah, definitely do that. Make sure you subscribe and hit the like and share the work. But uh, I'm not going to go too long here because talking while I do this, I can fully talk while I talk, but it is a bit distracting. And the amount I'm having to project because the microphone's over there, <laughs> it's a little bit, uh, a little uncomfortable to project like that. Okay, I'll just talk in a little bit. So just, you know, hear it. Right now, I'm not pushing. I'm not pushing. How does the normal voice sound? To the projected voice where I'm talking like this, trying to make sure my voice gets across the room to that microphone over there. Tell me if there's a difference. Marcus Kelleger says, I lay out on copy paper, Xerox it up to lend by 17 and light box my pages. That's good. David Williams told me this though. He said, when you draw small like that, Marcus, at least in his experience, and I agree with him and it may be different for you and I hope it is. But laying out small and then getting bigger, something happened that I didn't understand and I still don't, can't explain it, but I know what happened, where energy was lost. But if I lay out at full size, oh, this toe's crooked. It's, all the toe, toes are pointing this way, and then that big toe is pointing like that. See, I just noticed that. Look at it, because of the way I do the toe now. Ah, no good, no good. But we'll fix it right now. So we'll still keep that contour, but um, we'll know, we'll change the contour. All right, that needs to go up like that. Goodness. Hold on, hold on. Look at my own tongue for a minute. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was too far to the side. What? What? What am I doing? Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. So that needed to be adjusted. Hold on. That's all wrong. I gotta. The thing I was tracing was really wrong, so I'll, I'll get rid of my underdrawing that was incorrect. Come out here. Yeah. Okay, that's much better. Yeah, see, I found a mistake right there. Okay, so we have the, the layout of Vinitsa. Split the pectorals, and then gotta get the nipples in here. You know that. I don't like when people don't draw nipples, it's weird is weird to me. I mean, what is the point of being a comic artist if you can't draw nipples? Um, I feel like his face needs to come out a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Oh, and then I want, what I love is whether it makes sense in physics or not, is to always make sure I draw the bandana. And uh, whenever I draw the bandana, it does remind me of being a fan of the Ninja Turtles. So there. So there's your Max Volkov flying in and the buildings are gonna be straight up. So the vanishing point's gonna be like here. So just imagine like a building like that, right? Like a building there, 
and then another building going to the mansion up here. So we are like looking straight up, and it's a rooftop five with a bunch of rich and neat watching it. So that's just out here. I'm gonna look at the chat and then I'm gonna get out of here. But I thought I'd do a little live stream laying this out for you guys from uh, country. I really need to go have some lunch. I'm gonna barbecue some chicken in the background. Let me look at the chat and then I'm gonna go. Hit the like, subscribe. Guys, go buy Truth Justice American Way today. Um, I'm having such a good time working on it. Father of Dave Lord, it's come along beautifully. We'll have some more updates very soon. Marcus Carroll, we were talking about laying out. Yeah, I see that you've laid out full size. I try to keep the layout sketchy, so I'm drawing with the big size, not tracing. Okay. What's your favorite thing to draw, Mighty Magic? Um, Action-filled men in powerful poses and beautiful women, women's faces. Um, Mary Wolf 13, next step is getting on the materials. Drawing on Dollar General Arts. It does, the supplies don't matter, man. Supplies don't matter. The, the artist, Michael Jordan could have won in shoes from Kmart. Michael Jordan could have won in his socks. It doesn't matter. The art supplies, they, they, they can matter, like help and efficiency and precision. But you can do good. I mean, these are Amazon pencils. I bought a box of like $500 of them, right? So I bought a box of a bajillion Amazon pencils. And I, every time it gets down to about the knob like that, I just toss it and use another one. Okay, so I'm gonna go make sure uh, make sure you guys uh, go get go get Truth Justice America with Nick. I'm gonna have signups for Beef Loss sooner or later. I'll talk to my compatriots, see what Ethan, see what David, see what uh, everybody thinks. Will be a good time to launch this book. I'm thinking this book will be uh, next year, like February. I think I might launch it. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later.